Greetings, and welcome to Earthling Cinema. This week we are looking at Mean Girls, the 2004 smash hit written by one-time vice presidential nominee Sarah Palin. A true departure from Palin's other work, the film documents the socio-political climate of the American high school, one of the most terrifying and dangerous places on Earth. Our protagonist is Katie Heron, a teenaged human female who was raised on the continent of Africa. Africa was inhabited primarily by animals, so when Katie's family moves to the American province of Illinois, she must interact with other humans for the first time. Katie quickly discovers that her posh life in the plains of Africa could never prepare her for the brutal savagery of the American public school system. The girls have gone wild. We are introduced to their social order in a highly anthropological manner. Cool Asian, varsity jock, burnout, desperate wannabes, beware of the plastic. Much in the same way Katie's zoologist parents would classify the five animal species of Africa. Horses, tall horses, dogs, birds, and... You're a lion. These subdivisions form the basis of the American high school experience. Segregation, ostracization, and humiliation. Not necessarily in that order. Though there are adult humans present, they are largely decorative. The school is controlled by a student named Regina George. She's the queen bee. Her first name, Regina, comes from the word regis, which means king in Latin, the primary language of Earth. And her last name, George, is a reference to either the British ruler from whom America took its independence, or the clown prince of New York. Either way, royalty. Regina rules with an iron fist, implementing a strict dress code. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. You know that I'm not allowed to wear hoop earrings, right? And striking fear in the hearts of anyone who would dare cross her, and most who wouldn't. One time, she punched me in the face. It was awesome. As part of her royal duties, Regina uses an official ledger to keep track of all the females in her class. I mean, that's just like the rules of feminism. It becomes a sort of Bible, which is appropriate since, like Earth's Christian Bible, it's just a list of people's names and some rumors about them. The religion of high school is a complicated one with constantly shifting mores and attitudes, but it basically boils down to this. Math is gross and clothes are everything. You look awesome. I know, right? The American dream is to walk constantly infinitely down hallways. Also important is their preoccupation with locking mouths, a pagan ritual meant to indicate approval. But despite the peaceful coexistence of many disparate groups, there is tension in the ranks. They can't sit with us! Regina is a dictator, continuing in the footsteps of such noted tyrants as Adolf Hitler, Jimmy Carter, and Julius Caesar. Pizza, pizza. We should totally just stab Caesar! And like them, she would eventually be overthrown. <laughs> Indeed, as the total annihilation of the human species would later prove, all great dynasties must eventually fall. What is happening to the world? As is typically the case, this revolution is spurred by the proletariat. Those bitches. Together, the outcasts stage a coup to oust their leader using undercover espionage. And in Girl World, all the fighting had to be sneaky. Military strategy. Regina says everyone hates you because you're such a slut. She said that? And biological warfare. It burns carbs. <laughs> At the end of the film, Regina's throne has been usurped and Katie is coronated. However, she rejects the crown, dismantling the monarchy in favor of a new, more egalitarian system. Communism. For Earthling Cinema, I am Garrix Wormuloid. To see more exciting Earth action, hit the subscribe button.